Hi everyone, welcome to the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you're here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note, but my name is Catherine and I will be your facilitator for this session. First, your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to submit those using the Q&A button. You can type in your questions to presenters at any time. They are here, ready and available to answer your questions. This is one of many college presentations being offered. So feel free to check the schedule on the website for more. And lastly, all sessions are being recorded, including this one, and will be available at strivescan.com slash Virginia. We are currently in session A3, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order presentation. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our very first representative from Christopher Newport University. All right, hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Ashley Hutchison. I'm one of the assistant directors here in the Office of Admission at Christopher Newport. Uh, Christopher Newport is a four-year public liberal arts and sciences institution located in Newport News, Virginia. Um, for those not familiar with Newport News, we're essentially located in between Colonial Williamsburg and Virginia Beach. So 45 minutes west on a good day, we'll get you to Colonial Williamsburg, Bush Gardens, Water Country, some really great restaurants and shopping. Um, 45 minutes east takes you right to the Virginia Beach oceanfront and there's so much to do in between the two stops there so plenty to do in the area um, while we are a public liberal arts and sciences institution we really strive to provide our students with a private school experience um, through our small class sizes our personalized attention and our sense of community uh, you can see on the screen behind me we have um, 5,000 students on campus which is considered to be a mid-sized university uh, large enough to provide you a rich array of opportunities, but not so large that you'll feel like a number in the classroom. Um, and speaking of classroom, we have a lot of different academic programs, over 90 uh, here on campus, majors, minors, and concentrations. They're all taught by professors. You'll never be taught by a teaching assistant here on campus. Um, we enjoy small class sizes. So 60% of our classes are 19 students or fewer with about 2% being 50 to 99. Um, and no class larger than that, simply because we don't have a classroom that large. Um, our top intended areas of study for our students each year tend to be biology, business, psychology, communication studies, computer science and engineering. Some of our newest programs that we're really excited about, uh, we have a major in leadership studies, kinesiology, uh, as well as cybersecurity. Um, our most up and coming area of study here is neuroscience. And we're also offering new minors in graphic design and uh, data science. Uh, we have four master's programs here. Our most popular is our teaching program. Um, we have uh, master's of financial analysis, which is our newest one, environmental science, and then computer science and physics as well. Uh, popular advising tracks, certainly pre-med and pre-health, uh, two really great partnerships with medical schools. We have one with a phys uh, physician's assistant program, uh, one with a physical therapy program. Uh, we have a pre-law advising track and a great partnership with uh, George Mason law for a three plus three program, um, which uh, many students are also very interested in too. Um, while CNU is a really great place to learn, really exceptional place to live. Uh, we were just recently ranked number three in Princeton Review's category, dorms like palaces, uh, for public universities. So all suite style for our freshmen, no hall style bathrooms anywhere on campus, and apartment style for upperclassmen. So really great living accommodations that you will be living on campus through your junior year, where we see many seniors choosing to live on campus as well. Um, while the residence halls are really nice, we definitely don't want you to spend all of your time in your room. 
lots of ways to get involved, um, about 200 clubs and organizations that are active on campus, um, as well as club intramural, and we have 24 varsity sports as well. Um, we compete in a Division Three athletic program and enjoy uh, the highest winning percentage out of any university in Virginia, D1, 2, or 3. So lends into a lot of school spirit there. I do want to talk a little bit about our admission and application process. Uh, as you can see, we are anticipating about 8,000 and applications for a freshman class of 1200. Um, due to our selective admission standards, we do encourage students to apply as early as they're able. Early decision is great uh, if you know without a doubt uh, CNU is your first choice because it is a binding contract. Uh, if you are looking for a non-binding plan, I definitely recommend early action over regular decision. Our most successful candidates uh, maintain mostly A's and B's in a rigorous college prep curriculum um, and have upward trends and grades. So if you do have a rocky semester or a rocky year, grade trends are also really important in that review process. Uh, as you can see on our screen, we are a test optional university for admission and scholarship consideration. However, if you are a strong test taker, we definitely encourage you to send those in so your test scores can be a part of our holistic review process. Um, but again, we are test optional, um, not only for admission, but also scholarship consideration as well. Um, uh, one thing I do want to note, uh, other ways that you can enhance your application, um, interviewing is a really great way to do that. So it is encouraged for all students, but required for scholarship consideration, which I'll touch on before um, we move on to the next presenter, um, but it is available to our high school seniors. You can interview virtually or on campus and um, a great way for us to get to know you and uh, for you to get to know the university. I did mention it is required for scholarship consideration. We have two flagship programs here on campus, the President's Leadership Program and the Honors Program. Those scholarships range up to $10,000 and it's renewable for your four years that you're living on campus. So up to $40,000 at the university during your four years here. The Leadership Program is great for students that have a desire to lead and they have a heart for service. They'll earn either a major or a minor in leadership studies and complete about um, or at least 100 hours of service here on campus. The honors program, great for students that love learning for the sake of learning. Um, the biggest benefit is they're exempt from most of their general education requirements on campus. Um, frequently asked question is if you can do both. And yes, many students will do both and do both of them very well. Very easy to apply. It's one additional essay prompt, either on your common application or the coalition application. Um, again, that admission interview is required. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little insight on uh, not only about Christopher Newport, but a little bit about our admission and application process. Um, I will drop a link to uh, interviewing and visiting in the chat, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you all may have through this session. So thank you so much. Thank you. The next representative is from Virginia Commonwealth University. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm super excited to be here. Um, so, and can you all show, see my screen? Just making sure I'm sharing on the right one. Awesome. Um, so a little bit about VCU. Uh, we are a large university and we are located right in the heart of downtown Richmond, Virginia. We have two main campuses, both the um, Monroe Park campus, which is where the majority of our undergraduate students will take their classes, and then the Medical College of Virginia as well. Um, and in terms of BCU, I'm just gonna get started with kind of the Richmond, Virginia area because it is kind of the most important or a very important aspect of VCU in general. Um, Richmond is an absolutely awesome place to live. I'm a little biased because I've lived there my whole life, but it, it is essentially um, very central. It is about two hours away from everything, two hours away from the mountains, the beach, says two hours away from DC um, with traffic that can sometimes get pretty crazy, but we're still about that two hour um, away mark. We're very outdoor friendly and we're also uh, very small business friendly. We actually have seven Fortune 500 companies. We do need to adjust that number on the slide. Um, 11 Fortune 1000 companies 
And if you've ever been to Richmond, there is a lot of different small businesses that the community does support and that VCU does have a lot of different partnerships with. Now, in terms of the campus in general, we are a larger university. We have a little bit over 29,000 students total enrolled on campus. A little over 23,000 of those students are going to be our undergraduate population. Um, even though we do have that larger campus population, we do have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio and an average classroom size of about 27 students per classroom. So you do kind of get the best of both worlds where you will be taking those smaller class sizes. However, we will have that active alumni base of over 200,000 alumni. So there's a lot of different connections um, for uh, people who are a part of the university. In terms of uh, just kind of what we look for, we are a holistic review process. Um, so there's no absolutely minimum GPA that you need in order to apply and potentially be admissible into VCU. However, middle 50% of our students um, will have around a 3.39 and a 4.06, uh, those are weighted GPA numbers. Um, we're gonna be score optional, um, especially this next year. Uh, but if you do take those SAT or ACT scores, that middle 50% GPA is gonna be a 1060 to 1250 for the SAT. Um, we super score that. And then also a 22 to 27 for the ACT. Um, you can take both, you can turn in both. We're just gonna take into account your highest scores when reviewing. Um, in terms of different application dates. Uh, so November 1st, I would encourage you if you are dead set on applying to VCU to apply by or before November 1st. Um, that way, if you do apply and get all of your transcripts and information into uh, us by that deadline, you're automatically considered for either the presidential, provost, or dean's merit-based scholarship. There's not anything extra that you have to do in order to be considered. Um, the other important deadline is January 15th. That is our regular decision priority deadline. Um, now, we are we don't have any binding decisions. We don't have any early action and we're considered rolling admission. But if you apply by or before January 15th, you will have a decision by or before April 1st. Um, now that does not mean if you're applying in October that you have to wait until April 1st automatically. We try to get you those decisions as soon as possible, but we do have a lot of applicants coming in. So that's why I can only give you that guaranteed April 1st date. Now, since we are rolling admissions, say if you applied on, um, um, say if you applied after that January 15th date, you can still be considered to VCU. I just don't have that guaranteed time frame of when you will hear back a decision. Um, VCU is awesome. We do have um, 68 different undergraduate programs. Our most popular programs being usually engineering, School of the Arts, which is number four in the country overall, uh, number two in terms of public schools and number one in terms of public schools on the East Coast. And then the medical uh, field, biology, psychology, kind of the STEM field is also very popular. However, we have many other different majors and programs for students to explore. Um, so. Definitely, I hope to see you all um, explore VCU. Great, thank you so much. Uh, great information. Uh, just a friendly reminder that if anyone has any questions at all, to feel free to submit those using the Q&A button towards the bottom of your screen. Our representatives are here and available to answer your questions. The next representative is from Virginia Tech. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I am going to share my screen here for you. Um, all right. 
So welcome. Thank you so much for joining us virtually this afternoon. My name is Kayla St. Clair and I serve as Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Virginia Tech. Um, this is my 10th admission cycle with Virginia Tech and so I'm really excited to be here and talk with you about what it um, means to be interested in Virginia Tech and what Virginia Tech has to offer you. Um, so we are located in Blacksburg, Virginia. Uh, so we are a small town um, considered a rural campus um, and and that's something that you really get the best of both worlds because we are a large institution. So we have over 37,000 students at Virginia Tech with about 30,000 of those being undergraduates. Um, so you get that large university with all of those large university experiences, but you still have that small hometown charm and feel. So it really is the best of both worlds for a lot of our students. And it gives you the opportunity to make campus as small as you'd like to make it. Um, you can leave it big or you can make it as small as you want by getting involved and by getting connected. Um, one of the easiest ways to do that is through your major. Uh, so we do have over 100 majors for you to choose from. And this is everything from agriculture to architecture, engineering, uh, liberal arts, natural resources and environment, um, business, the College of Science, um, as well as our undecided option, um, which is among all of our colleges, which is university studies. And then all of our colleges also have their own undecided options as well. We also have a public health major, which is in our College of Veterinary Medicine. Um, and we have our medical school as well for students. Now, Hokie Nation um, is something that we're really proud of. I think our sense of community is one of the things that makes Virginia Tech stand out the most um, when you're considering an institution. And really it's this idea of just taking care of each other, um, whether it's just checking in on one another, opening um, doors for each other, um, and really just checking in, especially during times when, you know, we're a little stressed into the semester, you know, midterms, whatever it might be. We do our best to take care of each other um, and make sure that outside the classroom, you're being fulfilled just like inside the classroom. So we do have over 900 clubs and organizations for you to join. And this is everything from like a chocolate milk Monday club to a skydiving club. Um, you should not join that your first semester on campus. That's probably too much transition for your family. You can't like leave for college and start jumping out of airplanes, but it's okay. It's an option down the road. Um, to everything like division one athletics. Um, you know, we've got a little bit of everything for you, um, no matter what your interests may be. And the great part is that you're able to make Virginia Tech your home. So if you find that you have this interest and we don't have anything for it right now, that's okay. You can jump in and make that yourself with five other friends. You've got a brand new club or organization on our campus. Now, as far as applying to Virginia Tech goes, um, we've got two ways for you to apply. We have the Coalition and the Common App available to you. Um, and this is something where we wanna make sure you know we have a holistic review process because you don't just exist inside a classroom. And so we're not going to review your application like you just exist inside of a classroom. So we do pay attention to your academic side of things. So this is gonna be things like coursework you're taking at your high school, the grades that you're earning. We are test optional for students entering in fall 2022. Um, and then we're gonna pay attention to all of your personal qualities. So what are you doing from the time you leave school until the time you go to bed? Your answer shouldn't be nothing. You should have something going on, whether it's a club, sport, job, volunteering, um, you know, doing whatever family chores you might need to do to keep your household running. Um, you know, there is no perfect college applicant. The perfect college applicant is you being authentic and bringing your experiences to the table. And so we do review by major at Virginia Tech, which honestly should be exciting to you because that means that if you're a student who's interested in our English major, we're gonna look more closely at your liberal arts related coursework than your math and science coursework. Vice versa, if you're interested in engineering, we'll look most closely at your math and science when you're coming and applying to Virginia Tech. Um, we do have three deadlines for you. Um, we have early decision, which is binding, early action, which is non-binding, but priority. Um, and then we have regular decision. To be as competitive as possible, we do recommend the early action deadline unless you're doing the binding early decision as most of our students apply that way. So we do award most of our spaces during early action. 
Now, as far as funding your college education, there's no hiding that higher education in the US is expensive, but we also have to think of it as an investment. Um, and so that's something that I think is really important when you're thinking about funding that education. Um, we have two things for you to fill out, the FAFSA and the general scholarship application. Both of those things should be filled out by January 22nd for maximum aid consideration. Um, so just make sure that that's something you're aware of and you're keeping track of all those dates and deadlines as time goes on. And lastly, if I can get this to move over, make sure you stay in touch with us. Um, social media is a great way to have a pulse of what's going on on our campus. And so you can definitely check us out there, come for a visit, come for an open house. Um, you know, we really wanna make sure that you can see yourself at Virginia Tech. And part of that is being at Virginia Tech and coming to see us. We do have some virtual opportunities as well. Um, and so definitely give us, a, give us a chance and check us out. So thank you all so much. Awesome, we really appreciate it. Our last representative, but certainly not least, is from Randolph College. Oh, I just realized I was not on mute. I apologize. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Scott Cooper. I am the director of recruitment here at Randolph College. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out on this Sunday to uh, hear this information, not just from me, but other panelists as well, too. And we'll get started with, uh, this is Randolph College. We are located in Lynchburg, Virginia, uh, which is centrally located to a lot of different destinations, but most importantly, the main areas that we are centrally located um, that are close to us is the DC, Maryland area, also um, not too far from the Tidewater area in Virginia also. We have a lot of amazing opportunities for shopping, history, and my favorite thing, food. So that's just a quick tidbit in a bird's eye view about Randolph College. We have a little less than a 600 student body, 13 class size. Uh, we're number 16th in the nation with professor accessibility with an average class size of eight, I mean, student faculty age ratio of eight to one. Now, the next thing I'm gonna talk about as soon as it goes over is our majors and minors. Even though we're a small school, we have three graduate degree programs in our education, creative writing, and also our newest one is coach and sports leadership, which is already started to take, take off as far as a popular uh, graduate uh, course. Also, we have an opportunity to design your own major. And the unique thing about that is us being small, you can design your own major and have a very personalized touch on what you're looking at to create also. Uh, we have four professional pre-professional programs. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, we have 29 majors and 42 minors, with the most popular ones being in fine arts and also STEM-related fields. Now, as I spoke earlier, we have that 600 student body on top of that eight to one average class size, which takes us to our most new innovative way that we will be doing the courses, which is called Take Two, where you're taking two classes per seven weeks. So the traditional model has you taking usually three classes on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and two classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We've done away with that completely, and you take two classes per seven weeks. So one of your classes is on Mondays, both of your classes are on Tuesdays. You never have class on Wednesdays. One of your classes is on Thursdays, and both of your classes are on Fridays. So this is our new model that we have just started this year, um, well, this fall. So we look forward to seeing how much more data we can retrieve from that to make this an even better experience and a better opportunity for students to be successful in the near future. So that's our take two. Now we have an amazing opportunity for different support services here at Randolph College, whether it's through our transition programs, such as our super program, that is a program for anybody that's interested in STEM related fields to get a head start on their um, on their own um, bachelor's in the STEM related fields, uh, whether it's our academic services with the tutoring and also our accessibility and resources uh, services. Uh, advising is very personalized, as I stated earlier, with the design your own major, if you see something that we don't have, there's a possibility we can create it for you. And lastly, our Career Development Center, where we do a, a, a great job of trying to make sure we put you in an internship that's just not suitable for your career um, for the longevity, but also location-wise on top of that. So we do a lot of personaliza personalization here at Randolph College when it comes to making sure we give you a great experience. And we want you to be an original. We want you to build your brand, build your resume, create your story, and take advantage of the different opportunities we have here for you to lead. So we are Division Three, 
we compete in the ODAC conference, which is the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. We have 18 teams, and we also have a new esports team that you can get a scholarship for. And we also have a new arena, the Michaels Athletica Center, that has just been opened this year that, well, excuse me, last year, it was COVID. So uh, last year where um, our student athletes participate in, that's in the indoor sports. Uh, you can be an artist. One of our strongest suits here is the fine arts atmosphere. So whether it's you doing visual arts, whether it's you creating props, being a part of the orchestra, or also being one of the people to either create something or lead the Mayor Museum of Art, we have those opportunities here. Our most popular is our plays. Uh, a lot of students do enjoy being a part of the plays, and you don't have to major in fine arts to be a part of the play. Last but not least, we want you to get involved. We have over 40 clubs and organizations you can be a part of, but you can also create your fun. We, we give you the opportunity to create your own club. So if it's something that you're looking to bring towards this campus and be innovative on this campus, you can do those things. So we want you to be involved as much as possible. Now, we have a lot of amazing traditions, which one of the most popular ones is our odds and evens. Depending upon what year you do come in, you will be considered an odd and even, and there will be a lot of different competitions that you can take, that you can do during the process of your four years. So there's only a certain steps that you can walk up. It's only a certain area that you can go to, just out of fun and competitive spirit for you to be a part of the campus. And also the most popular one is the show where you get to see a different side of your faculty and staff. It happens once every four years and it will be taking place next year. We want you to go beyond the red brick wall. Um, if you saw in the pictures earlier is that the red brick wall surrounds our campus, but we want you to go ahead, go downtown, do intern and research opportunities with us and also study abroad. We actually have a RISE grant here of $2,000 where it can go towards your intern and research or it can go towards you traveling overseas to uh, do some studying in Greece. So we want you to go beyond the red brick wall. And also we have a very phenomenal historic downtown area where a lot of events take place. They're actually doing a lot of remodeling down there as we speak. So there's an opportunity for you to be a part of that also. All right, so now last but not least, we want to talk about how to be a part of the Randolph family. Submit your application. Our application is completely free, takes about 10, 10 to 15 minutes to complete and we're completely test optional. We evaluate, you we evaluate you based on your weighted GPA, not your unweighted GPA. So we do give you courtesy for those grades that you have taken in AP and honors courses also. We do have an early action deadline, but we are rolling admissions. My personal advice is if that you would just like to get an opportunity to see if you would, you can be accepted at Randolph, apply early because number one, we're non-binding. And number two, most of our scholarship opportunities happen within the first few months of the institution. So you have a lot more opportunities to add scholarship monies to be able to put towards your education here at Randolph. You can send us your transcript. We do accept unofficial transcripts until we can get the official transcript, but Send us your transcript via email um, or through your counsel on top of that. Next, of course, would be fill out your FAFSA. We'll have FAFSA nights ourselves and also talk to your admissions counselor to go ahead and get a gauge on everything. Once we have those done, come visit campus. And if you enjoy it, become a part of Wildcat Family by Deposit. Thank you so much for listening and um, I'll give it back to Ms. Cabin. All right, thank you. Um, all great information. And there's been some great questions coming in through the Q&A. So just another friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those through the Q&A button. Um, any questions at all about the college application process, or even if you have a specific question for any of our schools uh, today, uh, to also, we encourage you to also include the school name. So right now at this point, we're now gonna pivot into our Q&A portion of this session. I invite all our representatives to please go ahead and turn on your cameras to get ready to unmute yourselves. And our first question here is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented it. I think my biggest piece of advice uh, being a first generation college student graduate was or is to not be afraid to ask questions. Um, as a high school senior, I was pretty timid and often um, didn't reach out probably enough to my school counselor or my college advisor. And I simply didn't know that 
the college admission officers are here to answer any questions that you have. Um, so please feel free to re utilize us as a resource, whether you're visiting on campus or um, pick up the phone or shoot us an email if you have questions um, about our university specifically or just generally about the college search and application process. Um, it's great to use your school counselor, but recognize that we're here to help too um, in any way that we can. Um, I'll take this one. So I would say uh, stay open too throughout the process. Um, it kind of goes to asking questions as well, but also just kind of find what best fits you. Um, that would definitely help you in the long run. Um, absolutely the most finding what resources that you connect with best, um, what your interests are, everything like that. You don't know, have to know all the answers, but um, definitely stay open to the process and um, yeah, and definitely reach out for any advice and everything. Uh, so my advice for the college search um, will be that it's a lot. It is a lot. It can be stressful and it, it will be as stressful as you make it in a lot of ways. Um, so something that I love to tell students and families is sometimes you may want to schedule one time a week. Maybe it's an hour, two hours, and that's your college search time. Um, so the conversations about the college search aren't bleeding into like every single conversation, every single dinner you have, every single you know, day you wake up, um, because students, you're going to hear it a lot from a lot of people. You're going to get asked quite a bit, where are you applying? What do you want to study? Um, have you gotten any scholarships? You know, all the things. And so at home, if you want to schedule that once a week time where you can sit down and talk about it as a family, I think that that's a really great opportunity um, to maintain maintain some boundaries and some sanity in the process, especially if you're feeling stressed out by it. You're on mute. There we go. Okay, that's what I was saying. Uh, my best piece of advice um, is basically um, two things, two quick things. Create two different emails. Have an email specifically for your personal and have an email specifically for your college. Um, because the thing is a lot of colleges will be sending you information in regards to the opportunities here. And you don't want to get that confused with your Forever 21 or your Fortnite subscription being suspended or anything like that. So definitely uh, have two different college emails. And um, second thing is always apply for all scholarships. Uh, the best way I can give it to you and the best way I want you to think about it is, is that don't just go for those big scholarships, the 60,000, 70,000, and just think, oh, I'm gonna get those. Also focus on those small scholarships, the 250, the 350, the 450, because those small scholarships will add up a lot quicker than you being able to get that big scholarship. Um, the best weirdest way I can get you to think about it is think about all the times you've seen a penny on the ground. Think about all the times you've seen a dollar on the ground. I guarantee you've seen more pennies in your life than you've seen a dollar on the ground. The reason why you don't see many dollars on the ground, because everybody picks up that dollar. It's like hitting a lottery or something. But you see a lot of pennies on the ground because a lot of students don't pick up those. Well, not students, parents, everybody don't pick up those pennies on the ground. Those, if you pick up all the pennies on the ground that you've seen in your life, it'll make up more money than the dollars you've seen on the ground. Same thing with scholarships. That big scholarship is great, but those 250s or 450s are going to add up a lot quicker before you get that big scholarship. So that's my two pieces of advice when it comes to that. Great advice. And it's always good to really helpful to have someone from the other side to hear directly from those who work at the respective institutions. So again, thank you um, for that. Our next question here is what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? What's one thing you want students to remember about your school? I think one thing that makes CNU stand apart from a lot of other colleges and universities, um, first is our values um, of leadership, service, honor, and academic excellence that's interwoven into your collegiate experience, um, but also how that impacts our campus community. Um, it's such a special place that I'm hoping that you all may have an opportunity to visit in person and really remember how the campus made you feel. You know, you walk across campus and people speak 
Um, they smile. Uh, we're known as a community of door holders. Um, and it's those small gestures that make CNU feel a home away from home for our students. Um, we also have an honor code here that's taken very seriously, um, both in the classroom and the campus community. So as a student, I would spend many late nights in the library. Um, and would often need to take a break to get a cup of coffee from our coffee shop Einstein's and I would leave everything out on the table, walk over to Einstein's, grab a cup of coffee, walk back to the table knowing that everything was exactly where I left it. Um, and I wish there were more places in the world that you felt comfortable doing that, but I am so grateful um, to be a student and now a staff member in a place with this atmosphere of mutual trust and respect that we have here on campus. Right for um, VCU, I would say my main takeaway that I want students to remember is just kind of the opportunity here. Um, just we are a large public research university and there's a lot of different avenues to kind of get involved. We're a very diverse school. Um, we have a lot of different interests also from our students and we have a lot of resources to kind of facilitate that interest. So. Um, definitely something from VCU specifically to kind of keep in mind. And even though we're a large university, we do still have that sense of community. It is, it might be overwhelming at first, but um, once you do kind of get on campus, um, kind of see the campus culture, everything like that, it becomes a little bit less overwhelming as well. So um, that's just a couple of points I wanted you all to. So I think one thing to remember about Virginia Tech um, is really just the opportunities that you're going to have there. I know a lot of times students hear tech in our name and they automatically think just STEM. Um, they hear about our location and they think about cows on our campus, um, which yes, we do have cows, but they're not like literally right on campus. Um, and so there's a lot of different kind of stereotypes out there about any institution really. And so it takes seeing it for yourself and being there, being on the ground and really figuring out if that's a place that you can thrive. Um, and so making sure that, you know, Virginia Tech does have over 100 different majors, that we've got over 900 clubs and organizations. Yes, we're in a small rural area, but man, what opportunities will you have at an institution like Virginia Tech? Um, so really just making sure that you have the opportunity to come see it for yourself um, and find out your thing to remember about Virginia Tech. Through. Um, I would say the number one thing about us is the support system that we have here. Being that we're a small private liberal arts college, we have a very strong foundation of support. So whether it's needing support with a uh, physical, emotional, or just something random as just going off, off campus to get something to eat, we're able to support you in those aspects if you don't have a car, of course. So um, we are real big on support here at Randolph College and being able to make sure that we see you walk across the stage in four years. Awesome. And our last question here is, what is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? What is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? I think um, one thing that kind of comes to mind right now is um, being test optional. I know that looks different for um, many colleges and universities as to you know, what that looks like for their specific school, but oftentimes students will share, well, I can't be competitive without test scores. Um, and that's not the case. Um, so if you have strong test scores and you do really well, that's a great way to enhance an application. Um, but again, many schools often mention that they have a holistic review process. So that means test scores are simply one piece in the review process. You know, for CNU specifically, we've been test optional for well over a decade, so we're no strangers to reviewing applications without test scores. Um, I myself was actually a test optional applicant way back in the day. Um, so if you do really well in the classroom, you're challenging yourself in a rigorous college prep program, maintaining mostly A's and B's, but simply just don't do well in standardized tests, that's okay. Um, that may be that test optional is a really great option for you. I think one thing to keep in mind is we're all admission officers looking to admit students. 
um, that's our job and, and that's why we're here. So if you have questions about test scores, reach out to those schools individually um, and we can kind of help guide you in that process. You know, we want to help you put your best foot forward and create that strongest application that you can. So um, that's just a little bit about test optional and another plug to please reach out if, if you have questions, we're here to help you. I might say one myth that I usually see from students, and this is just kind of in general, is mostly prioritizing rank over fit. We have so many wonderful schools and uh, universities, colleges within Virginia and really around the country. Um, and the most important thing to really look forward is uh, just kind of how do you fit in with those programs and what programs offer you the best resources? Because not every student is the exact same. There are different pathways to get to um, where you are. There are different things will work for different students. So that's why I definitely really want to preach to all of you to kind of be open and um, just kind of explore what works best for you specifically? I think that's great advice and something to kind of debunk there. I think also um, something that I love debunking with folks is the myth of the perfect college applicant. Um, you know, we hear about applying to schools and you're fed this idea that a student's gonna have, you know, 20 AP classes, they're going to have straight A's, they're going to participate in all the clubs, all the organizations, they're going to be president, they're going to have, you know, 100 hours of community service, like every single month or whatever. Um, and that's just not the case. And it's not um, something that you have to strive for either. This is about you, yourself being authentic, um, and showing us, you know, who you are outside the classroom. And if that is working 20 to 40 hours a week to help pay bills at home, if it is being president of the lacrosse or not president of the lacrosse team, maybe you're the captain of the lacrosse team. Um, maybe you're president of student government association. Maybe you um, have to take care of your siblings at home. Those are all things that are perfectly okay. Um, and there's no shame in that either. So make sure that you own your experience. Um, you're sharing it on your applications. So we do have a chance to get to know you, especially outside the classroom because your transcript or your self-reported academic record, whatever it might be, that's how we get to know you inside the classroom. And so use the opportunities on the application itself to allow us to get to know you beyond that. Um, don't just rephrase what's on your transcript or whatever. Make sure that you're telling us something new and different. Um, but really remember that you don't have to be all the, all the things or do all the things. Um, that is a really big myth in this process. Um, a real big myth, I would say more, um, not just about the process, but just uh, for families in general, is that if you don't go to a big D1 school, you're not successful. Um, uh, please understand that whether you go to a D1, a D2, a D3 school, you're successful no matter what, because you're going to complete what some others may not be able to have the opportunity, that's a college degree. So being able to get your bachelor's and whatever you are able to get, there's a big myth that, oh, you didn't go here, so you're not successful. A college education is a great opportunity everywhere. And um, don't feel like, oh, my friends are getting accepted here and I didn't get accepted. Please do not let that separate you and make you feel that you're not being successful. So the opportunity that you do have, a, uh, the opportunities that you do have to go to college at a Christopher Newport, at a Virginia Commonwealth, at a Virginia Tech, at a Randolph College, um, they're all just opportunities to be able to get an education on the post-secondary level. So don't feel like if you're not at one place, but you're somewhere else, it's totally fine. Awesome. And I personally love that question. Um, I think it helps um, orient and settle everyone um, who is going through this process to kind of know what is out there, um, what are the things you have seen, the things that you've heard, and um, just know that you know, those are simply just myths. So again, thank you to our representatives for being here. Thank you for sharing. Um, we really appreciate your time. Again, um, it has been extremely helpful for me. Um, so I hope it's been extremely helpful for everyone else.
we have now reached the conclusion of this session. So thank you so much for each to each of you for joining us. We really appreciate it. As we close, there'll be a very quick five question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, your feedback is extremely helpful. There are more sessions just like this one. So feel free to check the schedule on the website for more. And lastly, this session is being recorded like many others and will be available at strivescan.com slash Virginia. Thank you all and have a great day.